before we learn something new, it's always good to know a little history about it. How did we reach to this point in time where IoT has reached to an explosive growth? Well, let's get into this time machine and take a journey to the past to find out. In the year 1964, Carl Steinbuch, a German computer scientist said, In a few decades of time, computers will be interwoven into almost every industrial product. At that time, it was a big statement to make. We did not have technology that advanced and in fact, took us more than 25 years to actually build the first IoT device. Let's fast forward to the year 1990 when John Romke created a toaster which could be switched on and off over the internet. Many regard this as the first IoT device ever. In the same year, some of the students at Carnegie Mellon University hooked up a Coca-Cola dispensing machine to the internet to identify which columns in the machine had the most chilled Coke. However, during these days, the whole technology was not called the Internet of Things. In fact, the term Internet of Things was coined only in the year 1999 by Kevin Ashton, a British technology pioneer, as the title of a presentation for Procter & Gamble. The presentation was about linking RFID tags in PNG's supply chain to the Internet. However, a major landmark which sparked off the recent IoT hype was in 2008-9, as it was the point in time when more things were connected to the internet than the number of humans connected to the internet. The next big event was in the year 2011, when internet moved from IPv4 to IPv6. Confused about these terms? Well. Let me explain to you what IPv4 and IPv6 stands for. On the internet, each entity is addressed via an internet protocol address, also known as the IP address. This is a unique address to identify any entity on the internet. Let us say this is the address you have for your house so that your friends can reach there. The scheme of addressing used prior to 2011 was called IPv4, which used 32 bit for addressing. Thus, the total number of entities, that is people or things that could be connected to the internet would be 2 raised to 32, which is around 4.3 billion. However, it was soon understood that this number would not be sufficient for the explosive growth which was happening in terms of number of internet connected devices. Thus, the newer version IPv6 was launched publicly in 2011, which uses 128 bits. IPv6 allows for 2 raised to 128 entities to be addressed. That is, well, these many number of entities. To understand the address space of IPv6 addressing, a statement by Stephen Lipson, a technology expert and marketing pro, is helpful. He said, we could assign an IPv6 address to every atom on the surface of Earth and still have enough addresses left to do another 100 plus Earths. You get it? It's an extremely huge number. We really don't think we'll need more IP addresses ever to be connected. In the year 2014, John Chambers, the CEO of Cisco System Incorporated said, IoT will be bigger than anything that's ever been done in high-tech. It'll change the way people live, work and play. Moving to the year 2020, we will have more than 50 billion devices connected to the internet and IoT is expected to be a $19 trillion industry. Wait, we reached the future. Let's go back to the present. And we are back to the present. Today, IoT is one of the few technologies whose impact will pervade through all the industries as well as reach us directly in our homes. Deployment of IoT in sectors like logistics, energy monitoring, military, industrial automation and cellular among many have already begun. Further, 
IoT affects all the aspects of the technology stack in terms of innovation at the hardware and as well as software level. It is clear that understanding the IoT and having practical hands-on experience is an indispensable skill any modern-day embedded systems, hardware and software developer should have in their arsenal.